All right, folks, let's talk about St. Augustine and the good life. So first we're going to address the question, who is St. Augustine? And then we'll talk about his theory of human nature, the human condition, and then we'll talk about his theory of the good life. So who is St. Augustine? Well, St. Augustine is a fifth century Christian philosopher and theologian, and he is probably the most influential theologian in Western history, having written hundreds of books, letters, and sermons in his lifetime. And his two most well-known books would be The Confessions, which is an autobiography of his uh, early life, and The City of God, which is kind of like his equivalent of Plato's Republic. And St. Augustine was born in 354 CE in the North African province of the Roman Empire in what is now Algeria. And his mother was a devout Christian and his father was a pagan. And according to his book, The Confessions, Augustine's youth was turbulent. This is because the young Augustine experienced several spiritual and intellectual crises. And this led to him as a young man abandoning Christianity and experimenting with different schools of philosophy. And in the Confessions, he states that he felt restless and lost in his young life, and he was deeply troubled by his desires. As an adult, however, Augustine returned to the Christian faith. And the reason why is because of two factors. One, he met the influential Bishop of Milan, St. Ambrose, who was kind of like a mentor to him. And in studying Platonic philosophy, Augustine found a way to make the Christian faith reasonable. So there were finally questions and kind of paradoxes about the Christian faith that he felt were resolved because of Platonic philosophy. So in 387 CE, Augustine was baptized, and in 391, he was ordained priest and then bishop in 395. And then he served as bishop of the city of Hippo Regis from 395 CE until his death in 430 CE. So as you can see, he had a very long career as the bishop of Hippo Regis. Now, before we discuss St. Augustine's theory of the good life, there are two things we must understand. One, in many respects, Augustine's theory is inspired by his own turbulent life experiences as a youth and young adult. So as we study his good life theory, kind of keep in mind some of his biographical information. And secondly, his theory is based upon his understanding of human nature. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of grasp St. Augustine's understanding of what it means to be human. And here we go. So here's his first teaching. One is that as a Christian, St. Augustine accepted the tenet that human beings are created in God's image. And for Augustine, this means that one, human beings have the power of reason. And secondly, that human beings have a special relationship with God in comparison to other creatures. Secondly, Augustine uh, makes a similar argument to the philosopher Plato in stating that human beings have a dual nature. So human beings are comprised of a body and a soul. And whereas the body is material, as well as finite and destructible, the soul is immaterial or infinite and indestructible. So when the body dies, the soul will survive the body after death. It is immortal. Thirdly, human beings, uh, as dual beings, have material and spiritual needs. So St. Augustine argues that human beings have material needs that need to be satisfied, like the needs for food, clothing, sex, and companionship. But they also have needs which are beyond the material. And what is this spiritual need that human beings have? Well, they need, according to Augustine, God. So why do human beings need God, according to St. Augustine? Because the soul is infinite and God is infinite. That is, the soul cannot be satisfied by material things. It can only be satisfied by an infinite thing. And the only infinite thing that exists is God. So the body might need material things like food and whatnot because it's finite. 
but the soul will not be satisfied by, the, by those things because it is infinite and therefore can only be satisfied by an infinite thing. And this brings us to our fourth teaching on human nature. For St. Augustine, human beings desire happiness. And people are happy when they love things and are satisfied by those things. So a happy life is one where all of one's desires are satisfied by the things they love. So for example, let's say that you are artistically gifted and therefore you love painting. So if you love painting, you should paint. You should get a canvas and actually paint because when you do that, you are actually satisfying that desire to paint. And when you are painting and you love it, you are satisfied and therefore you are happy. We can use the same logic with companionship. Let's say that you love your boyfriend or girlfriend or something and you love spending time with them. So if you love them, you spend time with them and that satisfies that need or desire to be with them. And when you satisfy that need or desire because you love them, um, the result is that you are happy. So happiness results when you are satisfied by the things that you love. But for St. Augustine, most people are unhappy, miserable, and restless. Okay, why? Because for St. Augustine, most people do not have an intimate, loving relationship with God. That is, most people in this world neglect their spiritual need for God, and therefore, they try to compensate for their spiritual desires by overindulging in material things. Thereby, people suffer from what is called disordered love. And disordered love is a delusional form of love that consists in expecting more from an object of love than it is capable of providing. And for St. Augustine, disordered love results in all kinds of unhealthy pathological behavior like addiction, pride, uh, depression and disappointment and anger. So for example, how might St. Augustine explain the phenomenon of addiction? So St. Augustine might say something to, the, to this effect, that addiction is a form of disordered love. And it occurs when people try to get more out of an object like alcohol or cigarettes or gaming. They try to get more satisfaction out of them than they are capable of actually giving them. So what they do is they abuse those things so to try to get more and more satisfaction out of them, but they can't. And then this results in anger, frustration, depression, and things of that nature. So addiction is a form of disordered love. Therefore, Augustine argues that a good life is one where a person is happy. And to be happy means to satisfy all our needs and desires by properly loving things in the way they are supposed to be loved. But the only way to reorder love is by satisfying our spiritual needs first. For when we satisfy our spiritual needs, we will no longer feel restless. For as St. Augustine writes in the Confessions, our hearts are restless until we find rest in thee. In other words, unless we have a relationship with God, we will always feel restless and disordered. Put simply, it is impossible for St. Augustine to be happy without God. It is impossible. If you want to be happy in this life, then you must establish some kind of a loving relationship with God. So why is this the case? So why is it that satisfying spiritual needs somehow reorders us according to Augustine? Well, let's take a look at this diagram. So here we are, this little stick figure. And according to Augustine's um, theory of human nature, we are comprised of a body which is finite and a soul which is infinite. And let's just assume for now that the body um, comprises 50% of our needs and the soul is also comprises 50% of our needs. So the body is finite, so it's only satisfied by finite things. So things like food, like this Big Mac, or like a nice sweater, 
uh, or a nice companion like this uh, dog here. So here's the thing. If we try to go through this life only satisfying the body, then we are only satisfying 50% of our needs. And as a result, we are not satisfied and we are not happy. So how do we try to remedy this? Well, by trying to satisfy ourselves with more and more finite things. So we just think to ourselves, okay, I'll just love you more. That'll do it. But what happens is that when we abuse kind of finite things in this desperate effort to be happy, um, we engage in this disordered form of love and then we're still not happy. And actually we're even more frustrated. We become sad and angry because we're still not satisfied. We're still not happy. So the only way to correct this for Augustine is that we need to establish a intimate loving relationship with God because it is then that the soul will become satisfied because now its needs have been met. So as a result, the stick figure now says, I'm satisfied and I am happy. That is, my love has been reordered and I am fully satisfied. The body is satisfied and the soul is satisfied. So in conclusion, for St. Augustine, the goal of life is to be happy. But most people are unhappy because they focus on material needs and neglect spiritual needs, which results in disordered love. So to be happy, one must satisfy their spiritual needs by establishing a loving relationship with God, which will allow the soul and the body to be satisfied, and thus one will achieve true happiness.